Hi, good evening, everyone. So uh, due to our COVID restrictions, we were unable to celebrate the Easter Vigil this year. And that's a night when we would have welcomed our catechumen who has been pre preparing for the sacraments of initiation. We would have welcomed him into the church that evening. Tonight, it is with great pleasure that St. Bartholomew joyfully welcomes Jackson Oodlesman into the Roman Catholic Church through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and first Eucharist. So Jackson and family, welcome. Good evening. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We've now placed ourselves in God's holy presence as we celebrate the sacred liturgy for the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy. Please stand. We begin with the sign of our victory, the power of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David, but I am but a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong, for who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you required. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands, for I love your commands more than gold, however fine, for in all your precepts I go forward. Every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord.
Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Recent social and political developments lead people of all political persuasions, as well as people of no political persuasion whatsoever, to the uneasy conclusion that we, what we are approaching is the end of an era, the end of an age. No one can really put a finger on what precisely this change entails. It's just a feeling, a suspicion, that something has come to a close, that we are moving into new, uncharted territory, vaguely forbidding, as all new land usually is when approached for the first time. But even more important to me is, can we continue to live with hope? You know, I really think we can because our Lord has given us his promise that he will stay with us at all times. He is the God of the living. He has overcome evil. He has overcome death. And his love is stronger than any form of death and destruction. That is why I feel that we should continually avoid the temptation of despair and instead deepen our awareness that God is indeed present in the midst of all the chaos that surrounds us, and that God's presence allows us to live joyfully and peacefully in a world so filled with sorrow and conflict. Remember the movie <clears throat> Field of Dreams? Ray Kinsella, played by Kevin Costner, plows under acres upon acres of his life-sustaining corn crop in order to build a baseball field because a voice speaks to him saying, if you build it, they will come. The field plays hosts to legendary, legendary past greats such as Shoeless Joe Jackson and others. But Ray is faced with the dilemma of either holding on to his field of dreams or selling the farm to save the life he knows. His brother-in-law counsels him with these words. You're going to lose your farm, pal. You're going bankrupt. You're going to default on a loan. Sell now or you're going to lose everything. So as the story goes, Ray holds on to his fields of dreams at the high cost of possibly losing what this entire world has to offer him. And toward the end of the story, 
Ray is reintroduced to his father as a young man playing baseball with legendary greats. His father asks, is this heaven? And Ray answers, no, it's Iowa. And Ray in turn asks, is there a heaven? To which his father says, oh yeah. This field meant everything to Ray and because of that, he was willing to sacrifice everything for it. Ray's story is familiar to Jesus' story of a man who came across a hidden treasure in a field. The treasure was so valuable and attractive that he sold everything he had to buy the field. Jesus told another parable communicating the same idea. In the parable of the pearl, a merchant wants to purchase fine pearls and finds one of immense value. Upon finding it, he sold everything he owned to buy the one he found. So what connection is there between a treasure seeker, a pearl merchant, and a baseball field builder, and a young gentleman who has decided to be baptized and enter the church? What do these have in common? The one thing they have in common is their total commitment to a dream. All are willing to sacrifice everything for a goal they set for themselves. And this leads to the point of today's gospel. Citizenship in God's kingdom involves total commitment on our part to God's dream. Let me say that again. Citizenship in God's kingdom involves total commitment on our part to God's dream. We cannot pursue it as we do a part-time job. We cannot work at it as a hobby. We must give ourselves to it 100%. We must make it a priority in our lives. God's dream must be our dream. Jackson, as you become a citizen of God's kingdom, God's dream now becomes your dream. You know, you ever realize that everyone here is a dual national? What are the two countries, the two kingdoms to which we owe allegiance? The kingdom of this world and the kingdom of heaven. We are American citizens. But in baptism, we died to this world and were reborn as naturalized citizens of heaven. We feel sentimental attachment to our fellow Americans and we are grateful for the institutions and customs of our nation. But our chosen allegiance to the kingdom of heaven ought to take precedence when, as frequently occurs, the two come into conflict. We pledge our allegiance to the kingdom of God every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, do we not? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, not any lesser kingdom of this world. Your will be done, not the contrary will of an earthly leader. On earth, that means establishing justice, peace, equality, and unity here and now as it is in heaven, meaning completely. We say these words, but do we really mean them? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure found in a field. Are we willing to sell all that we have to acquire it? Or are we still holding something back, still letting a, a lesser allegiance drive much of our decision-making? For instance, instance, the pursuit of comfort, uh, pleasure, affluence. You know, we seek happiness in a world of comfort, but find only monotony. We search for satisfaction in a world of pleasure, but find only discontent. We look for power in a world of affluence, but discover only illusion. Friends, only the treasure that is Jesus and his kingdom satisfies us. Like immigrants wanting a better life for their children, our parents had us baptized. But now it is our choice to decide what are we going to do. Are we going to cast our lot with the kingdom of this world 
even though we know better, even though we know it often leads to ruin? Or are we going to cast our lot with the kingdom of heaven, even though we know that it involves taking up the cross of sacrificial love? Friends, being a Christian is like being a pearl merchant. Being a Christian is like being a treasure seeker. Being a Christian is like being a baseball field builder. It involves total dedication and commitment. But there is one big difference between a Christian and the other three. The pearl merchant's prize, the farmer's treasure, and the baseball field are all perishable. When the merchant dies, his pearl will no longer have value for him. When the farmer dies, his treasure will be useless to him. When the baseball player dies, the field is but a memory. But friends, here it is. When the Christian dies, the kingdom of God will shine brighter and brighter and brighter. At the moment of death, there is only one thing that counts. It is not whether in life we have acquired a, a prized pearl or a rare treasure or a great career. The only thing that will matter is what we have become in the process of trying to seek the pearl, acquire the treasure, establish the career. One year when I was a chaplain in a high school, I celebrated mass for the football team in preparation for the state uh, championship. As an aside, that year the school won three state championships in three sports, uh, football, baseball, and wrestling. As the chaplain, I took all the credit for that. It was my prayers that did that. But during the homily at Mass, uh, I told the boys that 10 years from now, the important thing about their season would not be whether or not they became the state champs. The important thing will be what they become in the process of trying to win the state title. Did they become better human beings? Did they become more loving? Did they become more loyal to one another? Did they become more committed? Did they grow as a team and as individuals? After that mass, I was in the sacristy taking off my vestments. Suddenly I heard the coach say to the players, sit down a minute. Father said something that's bothering me. I wonder what I have helped you become in the process of trying to put together a winning season. Did you become better human beings? Did you become more loving? Did you become more loyal to each other? Did you become more committed? Did you grow as a team and as individuals? If you did, the coach said, then regardless of what we do in the state tournament, we are a success. If you did not, then we have failed God. We have failed our school, we have failed our family and friends, and we have failed one another. I hope to God that we have not failed. I pray to God that we have not failed. Friends, Jesus' words today make a very, very important point. Nothing in the world may take prior priority over God's kingdom and our pursuit of God's kingdom. Jackson, thank you for reminding us of that reality as we prepare to baptize you and confirm you, making you a fellow member of God's kingdom. Friends, on the authority of the scriptures, we learn that what really counts when we die is not what we have acquired in life, but what we have become in life. Did we learn to love one another? Did we learn to forgive one another? Did we learn to help the needy? Did we learn to encourage the faint-hearted? Did we learn to walk the second mile? Did we learn to turn the other cheek? Did we learn to become more loyal and committed to God and to one another? Friends, I hope to God we have. I pray to God we have. Because if we haven't, we have failed God. We have failed our community. We have failed our family and friends. We have failed ourselves. Father Paladino, I now present to you Jackson Noodlesman. 
Jackson has completed his preparation for Christian initiation. Jackson, please come forward with your sponsor. God's love has strengthened him and our community supported him with prayer and good example. He now asks to be admitted to the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now ask you, Jackson, as well as all of us gathered here, to please stand and uh, let us renew our baptismal promises as Jackson makes them for the first time. Please respond, I do, to the following questions. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. Please repeat after me. This is our faith. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it. We are proud. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You want to put your hand on his shoulder? Just put his hand on. Get down there. Jackson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jackson, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. Jackson, you have been enlightened by Christ. 
walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. Jackson, when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Let us joyfully welcome the newest member of our church. So we're going to go to the front. Jackson, we're going to go to the front. Jackson, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and have become a member of Christ's body and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of his Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are about to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to, be, to help you to witness to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be an active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear parishioners, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on this candidate for confirmation to strengthen him with his gifts and anoint him to be more like Christ, the Son of God. all-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon Jackson to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations. Julie, I don't really need the lemons, so okay. let's, just, let's just keep moving here. The Lord told Solomon and tells us, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. With confidence born of faith, we now make our requests to God. For the church, that we may recognize the treasure of God's presence within every person we meet, and may we always live in, that, in the joy of that knowledge, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all leaders in the Christian community, that they may remain strong in faith and integrity as they share the gospel message in new and meaningful ways today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unable to be physically here with us as we gather, may God keep them safe from all harm, Remain with them spiritually and make known to them the love and care of this community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, that God will guide them in nurturing their children and give them insight as they ponder options for the coming school year, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children who are struggling with the difficulties, restrictions, and changes caused by our current pandemic, 
May God protect them from harm, ease their worries, and bring an end to the pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the faithful departed, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. We remember especially Nancy Mara, Edna Tyler, and Eleanor Witkowski, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a few moments to add our own intentions in silence. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we place all our needs and concerns in the loving heart of Jesus as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the Lord is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good name of all God's holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Father, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we pledge our allegiance to God's kingdom, let us pray in the very words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Now let us go in peace and glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.